is telling me I'm live, but I'm digging money off from underneath my computer. <laughs> no, I really am. <laughs> That's for a friend of mine. I want to tell y'all a story. This is not an AMC update, in case you need to know that. This is personal. This is me. This is what's going on in my life, and I'm going to share it with the people that give a shit. The rest of y'all that don't kick rocks. Now, let me explain what's going on. Y'all really think to get fucked up with me, I think. Or, by the end of the video, you tell me if I'm the one fucked up. And I need to say, I'm so sorry. So, let's see what happens. First off, let me give you some history so you'll know what's going on. Y'all know my father died. Y'all know that I looked after him. Y'all know that I came over here every morning at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, drank coffee with him, watched the news with him, watched the show with him, all the way till around 2 or 3, and I went home. Well, in August, when he passed away, I lost that. And that was a big blow to me because he was my company for almost four years. So the only person I talked to between that time frame, he was my focus. Well, when he passed away and that went away, it got kind of boring sitting here. And one thing led to another. I eventually had to get internet hooked up so I can get not lose anything. And my thing. And when they came to put the internet in, I met this dude. And the dude was telling me his story. And it was a sad story. And I'm going to tell it to you. He told me that he had a girlfriend and they lived in her mama's garage. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not good. And he said, no, it's not. And blah, 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 one thing led to another. And I said, well, okay, let me explain something to you. I own that place next door, but I'm staying in my father's place right now. I'll rent that to you. Now, I can get $1,000 a month with the illegals. Because the way it works is you give me a thousand dollars, I shut my eyes next door, they can do what they want. Six people live in the trailer, eight people, twelve people. They even had chickens in that motherfucker next door that I seen living in the house with them. But anyway, that's another story. So I said, but I don't want to go that route. And I told this guy, I said, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help you out. If y'all want to rent the trailer next door, give me the lot rent, give me the electricity, and that's company to me, all right, because I had lost that. And he said, that's awesome, man. You do? I said, yeah, I'll do that shit. Lot rent and the electricity, you and your girlfriend, y'all get on your feet, and you can somewhere in life I, but I warned him then I told him I said but understand son <laughs> opportunity only comes around once in a lifetime you take advantage of that opportunity and get ahead in life with your friend oh yes sir Mr. Bubby yes sir Mr. Bubby that motherfucker told me and I said okay great so I let him move in. Now, hold on a second. Two weeks after they moved in, he quit his job. And I'm like, really? And he said, yeah. I said, why? He said, I didn't like their attitudes. Fuck them. And I'm like, well, I can feel that, man. Fuck them. And he said, and the company car was bullshit. It was trash. And I ain't driving around in that shit. And I'm going, oh, so you disapproved with the company car. And he said, fuck yeah. 
And I said, okay, I can feel that too. Okay, I really couldn't because if you're driving a company car, motherfucker, you ought to be happy. I don't give a fuck if that bitch is rolling on rocks like the Flintstones. So he quit. And I said, well, where are you working? He said, well, I ain't found nothing yet. I'm looking. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, can I give you some advice my dad once gave me? And he said, yeah. I said, son, you don't quit a job <laughs> unless you got another job to go to. You got to put up with the bullshit until you get to the stage where you found something else. Then you can walk in there and say, you know what? Fuck y'all. And walk out on them because you've got somewhere to go. If you don't do that six weeks from now, your ass going to be living with me. So, I learned that lesson. You never leave a job unless you got another job to go to. Then you tell them, fuck you. But he said, fuck you and the company car that I got to drive. <laughs> what? <clears throat> so I kind of felt I had a problem right there. This buzz for you. But I didn't say nothing. As long as his girlfriend got a really, 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 really good job and he pays really, really good, good money, I don't give a fuck. Pay the rent, pay the lot rent, pay the electric. Everything's cool. Okay. Fast forward a little bit. Also, he told me they had a little dog, a chihuahua. Would it be on a shih tzu? Would it be okay? And I said, fuck oh, yeah, your shih tzu and my dogs, they'll get along wonderful. Then I walk my dogs after they move in. And he's walking this bear of a fucking dog. And I'm going, what the fuck kind of dog is that? Boomer's looking at me going, I don't know. I've never seen no dog that big. This motherfucker was huge. And I said, that don't look like a chihuahua. Oh, this is our other dog, he informs me. But they're good dogs. They go in their kennel, and they're good. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't give a fuck. I'll get the other dog something to play with. And they don't. They don't get along at all, which should have been another plus. <laughs> So then, he informs me, they aren't going to have the rent for two extra weeks. Could I work with them? What can you say? I said, of course. Then the next month, same thing. Can't have it on the first. Can, can you wait till the two weeks from now and then we give it to you CSI? And I'm like, I guess what the fuck can I do? And he just did it again. Oh, we'll have the rent and the electric on this date. And I'm thinking, you motherfuckers just can't get it together. I'm giving you the easiest thing you can do. You, all you got to do is go to work, pay the lot rent and the electric and save the rest. And you can't do that. Getting kind of fucked up here. So I'm walking the dogs and he comes out. We bump into each other. We do he don't communicate with me. We bump into each other. And he wants to know, does the lawnmower under my trailer work? And I said, yeah, it worked. I said, now, just like it, it went on the water. We're going to have to clean the gas and stuff. But yeah, it works. And he said, okay. He said, no, I can take care of that. And I can fix that. And I said, well, you do you. you if, that's, if you can fix it, fix it. So he did. And I'm telling you now, 
He does a fantastic job for a man who don't have a job and sits at home all day. He can cut that little bitty parameter of a trailer lot and it looks beautiful. Let me stop the story right there and back it up just a little bit. I get a message. Mr. Bubby. She don't have a ride to work. And I said, okay, she needs a ride to work. I've been drinking. I can't fucking take her to work. This was six weeks ago. And he said, well, I'll take her if you'll let me borrow the car. I said, take the car. I don't give a fuck. If you like the story, hit the button. Y'all know the routine. So he says, okay, I'm going to take her straight to work. Come right back. I said, okay. In between now and then, let's just say my car, I walked the dog at six in the morning. And then when I walk him again, the car's not there. And I walk him at 11 and the car's not there. And so I text this motherfucker and I say, say, bitch, where's my car? Yeah, I walked the dog to six and the motherfucker wasn't here. That's over six hours. I'm wondering, where's my fucking car? Oh, I'll be home in just a little while, he says. I said, okay. Okay. I'm home with that motherfucker. So, I don't want to read your story or your comments because he's going to fuck the story up. I'm telling y'all how it's going. So, he had a job interview. I said, well, fuck, you got to work. Do your job interview, take your drug test, do whatever you got to do, blah, blah, blah. Bring my car back. I'm getting worried with my shit. Well, you're supposed to be just using it to take her to work. Oh, yeah, but I had a job interview. Well, okay. So I leave the key to the car to, for them to have access to so he can take her to work so they can pay the lot rent and the electric, so I don't have to worry about it. Everybody gets along, except for one thing. Remember I told you that bitch fixed my lawnmower, and he keeps that grass this fucking high. The dogs love it. They go out there, they roll around in the grass, just like I would do if I could walk, except for one thing. My grass is this fucking high. And touching the top of my motherfucking trailer skirting. All right? It's this eye. Two and a half foot. And I'm thinking to myself, now listen, bitch. I let you move into my goddamn trailer for the lot rent and the electric. I let you use my goddamn car that I pay insurance on to take your old lady to work. I let you use my lawnmower to cut the fucking grass with on your side and I can't get my grass cut? Can somebody please tell me if I'm the one fucked up? Because I don't see how I can be. How do you move in, quit your job, don't do a fucking thing except keep that little bitty grass cut, all right? And I can't get my grass cut as a sign of appreciation. I feel like I'm being abused. And y'all know what CSI does when he feels abused. Motherfucker, you better get out of my motherfucker. Who do you think you're fucking with? You don't know my jacket. Or you wouldn't fuck with me like this. You'd make sure my shit was a razor thin fucking cut if you knew my jacket. Yeah, I'm going to knock that motherfucker out. You're going to tell him, man, let me show you. You think I'm bullshitting? Let me show you something. Boom. There's the keys to my car. Bitch, you won't sit your ass in my car driving anywhere you want to 
and I can't get my grass cut, I'm trying to be nice to a motherfucker here. I'm trying to help him and his girlfriend out. And do you see the appreciation when it comes back to you? Amazing. It's amazing. Now, we could talk about AMC now if y'all want to. I was just ranting. I told y'all I just had to rant. I can't believe the audacity of people, man. Really? Really? A man unless you move in his place for practically free. Use his car. Use his lawnmower. And they can't cut your fucking grass for you? I don't ask for much. Oh, Tanker, check this out. There ain't no 30-day bullshit where I'm from. Motherfucker, when I tell you get out of my house, you leaving that day. Trust me, you don't want to live in my house for 29 more days. You, you just wouldn't make it. You wouldn't make it. It's as simple as that. I don't play that. Landlord's got to give you 30 days notice. Okay, file that shit in the court. Till then, I'll burn that motherfucker down with you and them dogs in that bitch. Just so to prove my point. So, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 do I wish a motherfucker tell me. Oh, you got to give us 30 days notice. <laughs> First off, you need to check the sheriff registry. You need to find out who the fuck I am before you tell me some stupid shit like that. <laughs> I don't need an eviction. They gonna want to move. And here's the bad thing. She gonna fucking put a foot in his ass and tell him, oh, no, nigga. Uh, I'm sorry if I used the M word. That's how we talk down here. But hey, no, that's not how it works, my friend. You got to go. You the one without a job. You won't get your shit together. I'm working every day, and he lets us use the car to take me to work. Fucking right. <laughs> What's wrong with men today? I was just watching this movie. I ain't going to lie. I was watching this movie. And it was about a wildfire and a family. It's called On Fire. It's on Tubi. And it's about this family that's caught up in this wildfire. And the son, the son is the one I'd focus on. He's a Gen Zer. And he's grabbing his head. And the fire's all around him. And, and Grandpa done. I can't tell y'all the story. I don't want to do a spoiler alert. But he can't handle it. He's telling him, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I'm like, bitch, that's called reality. That means get in the fucking truck and let's get the fuck up out of here. And you hollering about you can't handle it because they ain't prepared for bullshit. They saying, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You know what? I'm fighting my brother on this secession thing. But there's more than me. All right? I've got a younger brother. I'm fighting for him. And he's fighting back. I got a sister that lives not far from here. I got two sisters that live in Corpus Christi, Texas. And you know what? Ain't none of them interested. They don't give a fuck. They knew my dad didn't leave them nothing. So they don't give a fuck. They're like, fuck you. I don't give a fuck. He didn't leave me nothing. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to get the money and I'm going to tell the judge that honestly, why don't you just divide it, judge? But now I'm looking at him going, you motherfuckers will not help me fight this motherfucker from stealing everything from me, why should I tell the judge, give them anything? Just give me me and my brother, my, his, and 
they can keep the rest. I don't give a fuck. It's not about money. I'm about to get a lot of money. Well, I'm not. Uh, the plan I got going on with AMC. Somebody's fixing to get a lot of money. I won't get it because I'm not the plaintiff. But somebody's about to get a lot of money. AMC going to get a lot of money too. I need to think about that. I won't have to, Paul. I won't have to. See, when these motherfuckers ain't where they're supposed to be so he can go get her, he's going to say, oh, shit, there's a problem. Mr. Bubby, what's wrong? I'm going to say my motherfucking grass ain't cut, bitch. It's been raining. I just walked my dog. The sun's shining. Yeah, it's laid up high in the fucking house and not doing shit. We will eventually squeeze is the million dollar question. We're going to squeeze. If y'all follow me, I'm, I'm doing a series. I just gave y'all the history. I said, this is how I got started. Okay. One company had to get in front of the other broker who had to get in front of the other broker and the market makers and everybody tried to get their orders to the New York Stock Exchange the quickest. That's how all this, you got to understand how it got started to understand where we at right now. So I took y'all through that in the first video. I'll do a part two to that when I'm sober. I just wanted to rant and tell y'all, am I wrong? Am I wrong? That's all I want to know. If I'm wrong, I fucking go put them keys back where they're supposed to be and say, hey, man, you just take my car whenever you feel like it. Fuck my grass. Once you know how Ken Griffin got to the place where he got, because some people are asking, wait a minute, how did Ken Griffin make arrangements to be in the New York Stock Exchange's room with their servers so that he gets instantaneous, instantaneous transactions. That's in Al from Boston's lawsuit. I'm not going to be ugly, but I'm going to be realistic because I'm drunk. The problem with Al from Boston's lawsuit, and I'm about to lend a helping hand, hint, hint, is he's got the claim, he just don't know how to argue it. See, that's where these Harvard motherfuckers go crazy. They believe because of their Harvard education, they're so much smarter than everybody. But everything and everybody has a part to play. Who killed the Philistine? Goliath. Who killed him? If I ask you what killed the Philistine? Goliath. You say David killed him. I say no, the rock killed him. And it hit him right here. First off, it took a lot of skill for David to learn that. Secondly, David couldn't have killed Goliath if he hadn't reached down and grabbed the rock put it in the sling and swung that motherfucker and hit David. So, what does that mean? That means we all have a part to play. I told y'all from the beginning I wasn't David. All right, I'm not the one to lead this. I'm just a part of it. I'm a bishop on the chessboard. But I'm also the rock. I'm the rock you put in the sling and sling that motherfucker and you hit that bitch between the eyes. What does that mean? That means I know how to argue the case. Al from Boston has the claim. I have the argument and I'm reaching out to him and I'm telling him, 
if we work together, we could bring these bitches down. Because you have the claim, but there's certain things you can't say. For example, you can't say Citadel is paying the New York Stock Exchange kickbacks. Can't say that. And that's what he says. <laughs> Why can't he say it? It's true. You got to name it something court friendly, if I might, and say they pay a fee to the New York Stock Exchange, not a kickback. You not that's what it is. Don't get it twisted. But you don't call it a kickback. You got to call it what it is. It's called a fee. And then, if you want to put a comma and say kick back, that's a different story. So, Al from Boston's case can be won. But he needs the argument. And I'm about to help him with that. Just be cool. He don't even know the help's coming. I'm fixing to just drop it and say, boom, there it is, bitch. There's the answer. To everything. You can't make an allegation. Citadel's paying. Kickbacks to the New York Stock Exchange. You can't prove that. But. I can prove. Do you hear me? What I'm telling you. I can prove. They pay a fee. To. The New York Stock Exchange. What is that fee? It's the fucking kickback. Well, what's the difference, CSI? How you say it in court records. Y'all gonna catch on one day. <laughs> Let me see what y'all talking about. No, I'm not going to tell the sheriff. I don't call 911, motherfucker. They call 911, not me. Oh, I wish I could tell y'all what to look up to see what the fuck. <laughs> Boy, I wasn't a joke. Y'all don't know who CSI really was. I look at Donahue. I look at Donahue's picture and I'm going, that's a gangster. These motherfuckers don't know who this bitch is. That's a bad motherfucker, I think. And then when I go to his Twitter feed and I look at it and I go, and then he tells me he's from Brooklyn. And I said, this man's from the street. And y'all talk bullshit like that about him right now when he's just, I don't want to offend anybody. He's just coming to the realization of what really happened when they took that buy button. And everybody's mad at him. I'm like, you ought to be happy at him because he's willing to say, wait a minute, I might have been wrong about this. Citadel is the devil. And everybody has, including Robin Hood, pay homage to him. You think they like that? You think Fidelity likes having to send their order flow to Citadel for free? For free? No. No, they don't like that shit. They hate him. Everybody hates the big dog. Why? Because the big dog ends up taking advantage of them. And that's exactly what Ken Griffin's done. So everybody, every fucking body is mad at Ken Griffin and want to bring him down. Including Robin Hood. It would, it would make Vlad's dick hard. His girlfriend would love it when they bring Ken Griffin down. Trust me. How long was I in the pen? <laughs>
<coughs> I did a little more than 20 in the pen. I got out when they called my name. And I said, what's up? I was on the iron pile working out. I was swole back then. Had to be. They called my name. I go in the dorm. I said, what's up? They said, pack your shit. And I'm thinking, what I do now? Because I was always in trouble. And they said, nothing. You're going home. I said, don't fuck with me, man. Because I had a situation where the sheriff slash chaplain kicked me out of his prison. I woke up in a Mexican jail. <laughs> That's a true story. So when they told me you're going home, I said, no bullshit. Just tell me where I'm going. I don't give a fuck. I woke up in a Mexican jail once. And they said, you're going home. I still didn't believe it. So I packed my ship believing that who knows, I might end up in Argentina. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it was true. I was going home. I was supposed to die in prison. But we got a lawyer, and the lawyer worked his ass off. And eventually, it took a few years, but they cut me loose. Not for long. <laughs> Me and my brother, which was in together, we had a side hustle. And the feds found out about it. So we went back to jail. I did two more years after that. My brother, well, let's just say I'm teaching him what Chat DPT is. <coughs> <coughs> So all together, I would say I've done just roughly 27 years, 27 years in prison. Because I got sentenced to 25, then me and him escaped. Boy, y'all ought to hear the escape story. You think. Oh, brother, where art thou is funny. You ought to hear our ape story. When me and my brother escaped from prison. Wow. I'd love to tell you all that. That happened. So they tacked on some more time. So I had 30. And then something else happened. I got some more time. And... I ended up doing about 27. 27. Thank you, little alien. <laughs> You're like the coolest motherfucker in the Discord. Yeah, you're behind. I got a... Oh, shit. I'm almost empty. Are y'all ready for me to go? Y'all have heard me talk enough. Don't y'all ready? Aren't y'all ready for me to go? Or do I need to get the, do I need to get this and play Darth Vader like Lulu to do for y'all? I miss Olu. Lou's videos still pop up in my fucking recommended feed. I couldn't help myself. I watched one yesterday or last night and I got halfway through it and I was like, I can't watch no more. Because he was in the hospital. <laughs> pay pay the uh, money to public search and find out. <laughs> One thing you never ask somebody in prison is why'd you come to prison? You ask them how much time did they have? How much time they had gives you a clue to perhaps what the sentence would be. So, pedophiles get away for free. So, you know I didn't go to jail for pedophilia. 
I did 25, almost 20 something years. So when you figure out, well, what would he go to jail for for 25 years, 27 years? You'll figure it out. I ain't got to tell you. Use your fucking common sense. When me and my brother escaped from prison, <laughs> y'all want to hear that story? Really? We had this elaborate plan. I never sold and I never used crack or meth or meth. There's some lines me and my brother have you can't do. You don't do crack. You don't do meth. You don't do heroin. Now, if you want to smoke weed like I got right here, <laughs> smoke all the weed you want. But you got to have lines. Okay, so me and my brother come up with this plan. Well, what happened was, this is even better. You get a visual, because I just remembered it was over this. Look at this. Can y'all see him? Can y'all see the bulldog? All right. When I got to prison, I wanted a tattoo. What's a tough looking tattoo? I said, give me the bulldog, bitch. Put the bulldog right there. And he said, okay. So he put the bulldog right there. After he got, and that shit hurt, by the way. Then, later on, you know, you had to put Vaseline on it to keep everything good. It's okay. So when I went to sleep, in the middle of the night, the lights come on, they holler and shake down. So they come and look for weapons and cell phones. So, so we all go in the room where we're supposed to go while they tear our shit up. And they call my bed number. And I'm first off, I'm thinking, number one, I don't have a knife. Number two, I don't have a cell phone. What the fuck are they calling me for? And they said, you sleep right here? And I said, yeah. And they held up my bed sheet. And the bed sheet had the bulldog imprinted on it. And they said, take your shirt off. And I said, motherfucker. So I took my shirt off. And I had the bull, fresh bulldog tattoo. So they locked me up. When they locked me up, I went to court. And they gave me what was called weekend isolation and my brother was still in the dorm i'm locked up i got weekend isolation they're gonna let me out monday and i get to work as a privilege all week and friday evening at five o'clock i had to go turn myself in and be locked up until sunday afternoon when they let me out and I could go back to my dorm, get a good night's sleep so I can go to work Monday. So you had to turn yourself in on Friday. And you got let out on Sunday. No big deal. Fuck it. Except for one thing. You don't get a mattress. And I had to sleep on concrete. A concrete bed. There was no mattress. It was a slab of concrete. Bitch, shut up and go to sleep. The lights never went off. And for two days, sleeping like that, and I couldn't move when I got, and I'm talking, I was young. I was 26 years old, and I couldn't move. I was locked up from having to sleep on that concrete. And I told my brother, I said, bitch, are you serious? You really want to get out of here? And he said, fuck yeah. I said, well, we got to get out of this bitch before next weekend because I ain't going back in that torture chamber. And that's exactly what it was. So we set in motion and we had one week to escape. 
to plan the escape, to set it up, and get the fuck up out of there before I had to go back because of this bitch ass tattoo in the hole for the weekend. And we did it. And we pulled it off. We was able to get through five fences through an open field. I want to say escape the dogs, but as we didn't really escape the dogs. We took dogs with us because I told my brother, oh, we need to go to the dog pen. He said, for what? I said, let them bitches loose. Let them look for them, not us. So we cut the dogs loose and we hauled ass. To be continued. Love y'all. Be blessed. See you in the next video.